Good day, this is Jim Vitell from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 121, Digital One. Today we're going to discuss implementing combinational logic. And in all honesty, guys, you guys have been doing this since day one in the labs. It's going to come to you real easy. Um, the only thing I have to really say about this section is just think about what comes first. Okay, so when you're given a, an expression that looks like this, x equals a and b or c and d you know you're not gonna or b and c together and then and d and e and then and a to it you know because it's that just wouldn't make sense just think about this you know the order of operations you know boolean multiplication comes before boolean multiple uh, excuse me boolean multiplication comes before boolean addition just like regular math you know you wouldn't do it like this you know you would put a parenthesis in there which just wouldn't make sense you know so think about it this way is do your multiplication first and then do your addition now if you came across a formula excuse me why what is going on with my Where they did have parentheses, yeah, totally different animal than this guy. Because check this out, you would get, you know, be a distribution which does not equal this guy. Does not equal. Okay, because think about that. Because now you've got a a term right there. So I mean, just draw these things out. What are you going to do first? Well, A and B. Then you're going to do a C and D and E. Or them all together. Okay, this guy, what is it? Still A and B. But now you've got a four input and C, D, and E, and this A, you can just do a little wire over. And those are going to be ORed together for Y. So really not that complicated. Just think about what comes first. And the way I think about it is order of operations. Multiplication comes before addition in regular math. Boolean multiplication comes before Boolean addition in Boolean math. Okay, so uh, one thing I want to talk about is this example right here. Okay, here you go. And that's our x. Okay, what are we going to do first? Well, here's our parentheses. We've got to do everything inside the parentheses first. But within the parentheses, we've got a c and d, excuse me, c and not d, and an or an e and f. So we've got to make our not d first. So D is coming in, and there it's its inversion, and it's going to be anded with C. So that's step one. You got to walk through the inverter, then it's going to get to the AND gate. Now E and F, those are anded together, and then they are all together or together. Okay, so that's giving us this entire thing here, where this output right here is C and not D, or E and F. Okay, I'm going back here. This is a C and not D, E and F. Now, that's going to be fed into a three input AND gate. Where that's A and that's B because it's A and B and C and not D or E and F. Okay, so this is a pretty cool example because check this out. Let's say you've got a chip that its propagation delay for just for the sake of argument is one second. 
Okay, so D comes in. It's got to take one second to get through here. And by extension, everybody else has got to wait up for D to go through there. Then it's going to take one second to get through these level of gates. Then it's going to take one second to get through these level of gates. And then one second to get through these level of gates. Those propagation delays are additive. So all total, four seconds to get through there. But now, knowing our Boolean algebra, uh, the laws of Boolean algebra, we can simplify this into, via the distribution properties, A and B and C and not D, or A and B and E and F. So what have we done here? Well, we've simplified the, simplified the circuit to look like this. And there you go. You've got two four input AND gates feeding a two input OR gate. And now, let's say it's the same type of chip, though, where it's got one second delay. We've got to go through here, so that's one second. D's got to go through there. Everybody's got to wait for him. One second to get through these level of gates. One second to get through this level of gate. And what you've got here, it's three layers now. It's only three seconds to get through. And you've made a faster piece of equipment there. So think about that propagation delay time um, and how you set up like these big long things compared to a shortened three level there. Okay, so that is pretty much all I want to talk about implementing combinational logic. And then we're going to talk about NAND and NOR gates universal properties, which again, you guys should be very well versed in by now.